Alrighty then, folks, we are back with some more SD Gundam G Generations Genesis. So, in the last episode, we finished up Thoroughbred, and we are now starting MS Igloo. Because things have not changed, I have actually closed down the poll, so... If you, want to, if you guys want to go look at it, the poll as of today is what it's going to be, or at least the order for the One Year War is going to be. I believe we're doing... Yeah, we just finished Thoroughbred, so we're doing Igloo. Then we're doing Blue Destiny, uh... Then we're doing Rise from the Ashes, and then I think Missing Link. Yeah, we're doing Blue Destiny, then Rise from the Ashes, then Missing Link, then this one, then, or no, then 0081, then War in the Pocket, and then finally Lost War Chronicles, because no one likes Lost War Chronicles. Yeah, I think we got everything else, but we're starting Igloo today. Just making sure. And yeah, now it's set in stone, and then after we'll do Stardust, and then we'll do Zeta, then we'll do Double Zeta, and then Unicorn, and then we'll be done. Oh, then Hathaway and all the other DLC stuff, which hopefully by then, uh, Thunderbolt and all that other junk should be released, but I'm not, I'm pretty sure their February is going to be like February 28th kind of thing. But anyway, this is a good episode, because we got to change everything, but as you'll notice, I've slowly started phasing in non-custom pilots. You know, like Char, and Sima, and Zero. This is the earliest version, uh, the earliest cyber new type made by the Murasame Institute. You know, the one from 4 and Zeta. This would be her older brother, Zero, who is only in Garen's Green and comes in at an event where you give money to the Murasame Institute, and he joins you, but then he realizes what he is. He, ma he makes you make another new type, who's Wayla or Layla? I can't exactly remember. It's something weirdly pronounced though and then they rebel and if you could either side with them to get a couple of really good new types or you can uh go against them and make a couple of clones of older new types who turn out really shitty like stat wise there's no point in getting them at least peru clones have a reason with those extra clones they're like really trash but if you have like 20 quid mothas like it doesn't matter what their stats are yeah so that's zero um, we got Rumble Roll over here in the Noct. I thought about giving him the Gion, but the, the Noct sound better for him. And the problem with that is we haven't done a ground stage in a long time. Like, a real long time. And we are doing MS Igloo, which is five out of six stages in space, most likely. I don't know how long it really is. I think it's five stages, though. Which brings some issue. We also have Amuro down here and Yazon. I haven't really got to use Yazon since I was... I've trained that pretty well, but um, I had ya I had Amuro as the squad leader for a while in the Gundam. But look at his command stat. It's 27. Like, I didn't notice that before. Dude can't lead, like, a group out of a paper bag or, you know, the old saying goes, can't lead a platoon of marines into a brothel. Like, that's just sad. Versus this guy who has, you know, 161. Zero's also like this. His is, like, super low. But, like, Char... 165, Rumble Raw 165, Seema's 153, like, legitimately Shiro, whose stats are horrible besides defense, has more command than he does, and when I had him in as the squad leader, I had to have everyone in a, like, they had to be on his cardinal directions to be able to combo attack, it was terrible, so we throw this guy in, I think we'll replace him later with somebody else, I haven't decided yet, you know, no one we really unlocked yet. Oh, I need to buy this guy and throw him in. Somebody wanted him. I don't know. How are Agar stats is the question. I'm going to stand you by and deploy you. Yeah, so that happened. Um, Stat-wise, though. Yeah, Agar has 158. Makuve even has more than he does. Yeah, she's only at 90. Ford and his stupid shit has more than he does. Hell, even Ryu has more. Dude can't lead himself out of a paper bag. Yeah, Shiro starts with 130. And I could pick up these guys who have amazing skills. Mainly because they're important. But anyway, on to the interesting thing. So, I was asked to put Willow in charge of the newest EL2, which is a new type unit, so I did it. You know, like I said a couple of episodes ago, if you want to see something, tell me. 
If not, I'm going to go with my generic bullshit. But yeah, we have, we can either get the Cubile and, you know, unlock a Mon and eventually level that up to get the Quinn Matha or, you know, the mass production, the Cubile, uh, the red Cubile or the purple Cubile, then the Quinn Matha. Or it might be purple than red. Who really cares? I think it is purple than red because the Cubile 2 is purple and then the Peru 2 version is red. There's the newest EL2, which I think we're going to go with, which is just the newest EL with bits. And there's the Zod, Zod, the Zod I Akuk. Uh, usually it's Zod uh, apostrophe I apostrophe A apostrophe cock. That's why I call it the Zodacock. It is basically a weapons platform. It's a giant cannon. And it has wired claws, apparently. That I didn't know. But that can also turn into stuff we want, you know. I'm not actually sure what that is, but that's the Shambolo, and I'm not exactly sure what that is either. Space only though, and is that the new uh, the Neo Zeong? It might be the Neo Zeong. Give me a second to check. Oh, which by the way, if you're wondering, it has been brought to my attention that the Neo Zeong is way OP. Nope, that's something different. Uh, the Neo Zeong is like super super fucking OP, and I looked it up. And it is. Basically, it has an ability where anything within, like, ten tiles from it, no one can use beam ranged weapons. Like, that's bullshit. Beyond bullshit. So, we're not going to use that. Well, I'll use it and show it off, but we're not going to use much of it. Basically, be like the Phoenixes, except for I don't need to show off with the Phoenix. Not as needing to show off with the Phoenixes as I did. But we're going to go with the new ZL because I don't want the Zodacock, to be honest. Though the problem with these is they're space only, so we might have to eventually put this away for something else. But I think from here, we're either going to go Big Rang or whatever this is. Which, I'm curious as to what that is. Maybe that's the Alpha Zero? But we'll see that in a second. For now, though, we're doing one of the grandiest stages, apparently. So, yeah, we're going to take advantage of that. And with the Rebow, it's level 4. We could either go Sleeves... Which is, you know, the same thing except for has a beam machine gun. Or the bow, which has a beam rifle. And a mega particle cannon. This is the Glemmy Toto version since it's orange. It's also the prototype. The green, which would be closer to this, though a darker shade, would be the Royal Guard version. And without the cool designs on the arms. But I think we're going to go with this because while we could go with the, so with the Shinaju, we also have a Nightingale who can become the Shinaju, who's probably going to become the Shinaju. So we're going to go with the standard bow, my absolute favorite unit. Well, one of my absolute favorite units. Which, from here, we can develop it into various forms of the bow or go back to the rebow. Which, I might go back to the rebow and then get the sleeves one, then go back to the bow from the sleeves version. Who knows? We also get the Dryzen, but we already have one in the... We already have one in, like, the hangar if we need it, so there's no point in doing that. With the Gion Custom... We can either go Gion Eos, we could get the Galbaldi Alpha, which we aren't because we have a Galbaldi Alpha already. Or we can go the Arjarjo, which we totally are. I don't really care about the Eos right now. Because, yeah, all it does is get us the customer of the Arjarjo, so... Instead, we're going to go with the Arjarjo, which could probably turn back. And get the Gaimalk, or the uh, Galbaldi L and Galbaldi R. No, Galbaldi R, Galbaldi L. I know my sides, damn it. I was looking because the spear's on the left in this one and the right in that one. It, they're flipped over. Yeah, we could go back to the Gion if we wanted from there, so. Yeah, I think we'll do the Arjarjo, plus that'd be cool to look at. If you guys want me to, I'll show you what this one is, but it's basically a Gion with a bazooka. I wish the Krieger was in this. The Krieger looks badass, but it isn't. Um, our high mobility Gelgoog, we can develop that into either the Jaeger or the M. And while Sigma is piloting it, so I kind of want to go with the M so we could get her commander version of it. I think we're going to go with the Jaeger for now, and then we'll go to the M from the Jaeger, which is this one. Not sure what this one is, though. No, that's the ground version. That one's the M. Because the M works in space, the ground version does not. But we're about to... Well, we'll see the ground version eventually, because it's... Ken Burnstat from Lost War Chronicles' suit. Um, the Galgoog Jaeger is basically a Galgoog with a sniper rifle and a beam saber. 
not the double beam Najinata, but a be actual beam saber. That should work out for us. And for here, we have the Nightingale, which can either turn back into the Sazabi. You can turn into the Beta Azuru. Didn't know that was a thing. I had to look it up. But yeah, that's a thing. Which, I'm assuming this one's the F-Aziru. That's the Zodacock, and I'm not sure what that one is. Don't tell me that's like the deployed Zodacock and that's the normal Zodacock. I'll be mad if it is, but I'm hoping it's not. That might, that might be the one from Char's Deleted Affair, the Zero. Yeah, so we could get that if we wanted, and I considered that inside the new CL, but I think we'll just go straight Shinaju. Then from Shinaju, we can either go back to the Shinaju Stein or the uh, Neo Zeong, which we might go back to the Sazabi instead or grab the, the Stein and try to get that into a new or something, but that should be fun. And as far as the uh, the Gabal or Gerbera, I was about to say Gabaldi Tetra. Gerbera Tetra, we can go to the custom, which is basically just an upscale of it. Like, the stats are a little bit better. And once we level it up, the energy and the HP will be better. But, like, it's exactly the same. And from this, we can get either the Arjarja or whatever that is. Which we might go to whatever that is. But I like the Gerbera Tetra custom. It's cool. I think it was Kai before, though. And then from the Galbaldi Alpha, we could either go Galgoog, but we've already had a couple of those. Or Galbaldi Beta. Which, the Galbaldi Beta is... The original design for the Gabaldi Alpha, which was going to be in the first show but wasn't, was taken by uh, from by from Xeon engineers who also joined the Titans later and was worked into a Federation model following Xeon principles. So it's a very weird unit, and it was only used by the actual Federation. It wasn't employed by the Titans, but a couple of the units were drafted into the Titans because the Titans did that all the time, which it should be fun. It's basically a uh, Hyzak with a missile shield, which I'm thinking this one's a Hyzak. And then this is the L and the R. Um, then on to the Federation team. We have the GPO3 here. I'll get the Orcus eventually. I just didn't want to have to train just the Orcus alone kind of thing. With our G3, we could either go 4 or 5. We already have those. Or we could get uh, Christina and the Alex, so... And go Alex. And from there, we can either go I'm not sure or I'm not sure. Maybe this is the uh, Cherubdim armor or Chabham. How do you pronounce that one? Maybe that one is actually. That one probably is. I don't know about that one. We'll see. Um, We have the Gundam Alice, which... Well, the S Alice. We could either go into the double Zeta. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that about myself. The EXS. Yeah, I knew about that. Oh, and the pilot's name is Ryu Roots. Completely forgot his name last time. We're going to be getting this one. Or the Deep Striker, which is the mobile armor form. It's an XL, which is the only reason I didn't get it. It looks cool. And it can get the S, the EXL, or the Orcus if we wanted. But instead, we'll go with the EXS. And we also unlocked Ryu Roots, which we'll get him eventually. Plus, he apparently has a really cool animation with it that I want to see, but... Eh, that'll probably be in an extra episode. So our Heavy Gundam, I trained it up to level 4, because we already had the Full Armor 7th, so I don't see a point in going back. We can either get the Full Armor Gundam or the Perfect Gundam. You guys probably haven't heard of the Perfect Gundam. The Perfect Gundam is from an obscure manga from 1988. It is basically when they first released the 300 yen Gunpla kits. Uh, somebody ripped the guns off of a gun cannon or a gun tank, then the legs off of a gun cannon and stuck them on a Gundam and made the perfect Gundam, air quotes. So we're going to get that because the full armor sounds boring. Plus, you know, it can turn into the full armor or whatever that is. So we're going to get that, which uh, basically it has a ton of guns on it and shoulder cannons, which is pretty cool. And I believe uh, that was also where the perfect Zeong came from. Uh, they, like, took the model of the Zeong and gave it, like, a real grade's legs or something like that. It was really weird. It was the early thing to build fighters. Like, I think it's actually called Build Fighters too. And the kid looked like the original version of Ash in the manga from Pokemon. But yeah. 
So uh, we la I leveled up the Hazel Oswa. We could either get the Gabfoli, which I guess it was a prototype to, maybe? Probably not, though. Which would be kind of cool. Or we can go and get the prototype Bylant. Or is this a uh, Goplant? Never mind. I can read, apparently. Um, but we're gonna do this one since we're kind of on a mobile armor ki or a hazel kick. This will probably lead us up to the Goplant, and we already have a Goplant. This one's in fact a Goplant, or whatever this one is, which we'll probably get that one. Um, as far as Ingrid's Goplant does go, we have a choice, which we already have these two, so we'll ignore them. We can either get a actual Goplant or the Goplant Custom. The go the Goplant Custom, while it may look cool, is a plane. And thus, I immediately hate it. But it can get us Jared, or a Goplant, or something, or something. Hmm. It looks very Gundam-ish, but I don't think it's a Gundam. It's not Jaegen either. But I think we're gonna go normal Goplant, because I like the normal Goplant a little bit better. Which, then we'll be able to get what that is, or if we really wanted, we could go straight to a Goplant custom. Yeah, just real quick. Yeah, so we can only get this to something that's level 5. It's also an EXL, which means I think I know what it is. I don't know the name to it or I'd say it. We have the gun cannon, which, ooh, interesting story on this gun cannon. I was doing Solomon because I couldn't redo Aboku because you have to control Federation pilots. And Amuro and his people are stuck on their own side and it's kind of annoying. This, gu this single gun cannon dodged Big Zom three times and killed him. Like, he soloed Big Zom himself and got three levels out of it. It was great. But we have a choice. We could either go back to the mass production, which would be kind of boring. We could go to the heavy arms type, which sadly is literally the same thing. I was very disappointed. I wanted, like, a full-on, like, heavy arms style loadout on the enemy kind of thing. Or we could go to the gun cannon 2, which has beam cannons. Also, the search function, which is one of the reasons why I want it. And then we can either downgrade to the heavy arms type or go to the gun uh, GM cannon mark 2 so I think we're gonna go with this one because why not I always make fun of these in uh, Garen's greed 2 because they're really really trash I don't know why they're in the game but we'll finally use one and then there's the sniper rifle Delta team the GM sniper um, we could either go to the standard sniper which I do have one of these in storage if we wanted it the sniper custom or the sniper 2 um, we capture or we captured an original sniper too from that last uh, Zionic front stage, but I upgraded into the Delta, thinking it'd be slightly different. It isn't. It's the exact same animations, just it's slightly a paler color of blue. So we have a choice between the sniper, the sniper custom, or the sniper two. I think we'll go sniper custom, and then from there we'll either go sniper, whatever this is, or sniper two, and then from. If we did go back to the Sniper 2, we could go to the original Sniper, I think. Or, um, this is actually the Cold Climate type, uh, GM, which is the GMC, which I thought one of the earlier units was. It's basically a GM with a machine gun instead of a be uh, beam spray gun. So, you know, we could, like, loop around if we wanted, but I think we'll go custom, since this one has a specialty beam rifle, the R4 beam rifle, that I'm hoping is different. Oh, and, um, also got one of these things, which is a Cold Climate Zaku. This is the Zaku F2. I don't know why it's not called the F2, which was the terrain type, or the deep forest terrain type. But it's painted white, and it's a different unit in this one, so it is what it is. Like, it's a Zaku. All the Zakus are the same. Yeah. So that's our whole thing and you know, about 20 minutes. Yeah, next thing should be interesting. Um, we do need to get rid of the Slave Wraith, so I need to think of something to replace it. Because this is basically ground only. We'll get to use it in Missing Link, so I don't even need to show it off. And it's just not that good. Like, we could go straight up Sniper 1 if we wanted, or... But, like, I think this is ground only, right? Yeah, that, that one's ground only as well. We could go Gun Tank, but that's, again, ground only. Um... Car? We could go car. And we don't have the money to go for anything else. So I'll leave it as a slave wraith for now, but if I think of something. Uh, the reason we aren't going zany, even though I already bought one. It only goes Zaku or GM. 
The zany was built from parts from salvage, uh, salvage Zaku's. Uses the test bed for the original, not for the original GM, for the original ground type GM, which was the test bed for GMs. Yeah, so I'll try to think of something, but we have a majority of Zeon suits, which is the issue. Also, go helicopter if we wanted. That'd be kind of ridiculous. Or saberfish, that would be funny. These things are actually kind of viable in this game, though, which is sad. Then we could go get a ball, and from a ball, we could go... There's something you could... Uh, this ball, I think it is, is the shark face ball, which sells for some ridiculous amount of money or something like that. There's some way you can grind out saberfish that I don't exactly remember to off the top of my head. Yeah, so we're going to go here. We're going to go to design. We're going to check if there's anything new. The Johnny Ridden stuff, awesome. I didn't think those were in the game because I kept trying to combine all our red stuff, even like I bought some char stuff to try to do it. But I couldn't get that to proc. Apparently you just have to have a more red mobile suit than, you know, the Sazabi. But whatever. So we can get the high mobility Johnny Ridden, the Johnny Ridden Zaku 2, the Masala. I wasn't expecting that one. Oh, and that's all. Um, apparently if you get a Gelguk high mobility, you also get his Zaku 2. Or his Galgook high mobility, and if we get his Galgook, we will unlock Johnny Ridden himself. So I'll be doing that in my off time. Probably train up one of the other Galgooks we have. But yeah. Um, as far as this goes, basic Zaku. Speed slightly faster. It, it basically has the same stats as Char's does. We'll look at that in a second. And Johnny Ridden's normal Zaku, which... Yeah, exact same thing. And the Masala, which... Uh, this is Shiraco's first customizable mobile suit. It doesn't turn into anything cool, though. It's just like a plain-looking thing. Um, yeah, it only works in space in this one, though. In Gear and Screed, it worked in the atmosphere, I think. But it's, like, huge. Uh, it has Beam Saber, Mega Particle Cannons, Missile Pods. Nothing exciting. And it transforms. We'll, get, we'll see this once Zeta comes up, because we're definitely going to have to protect that shuttle from this guy. You know what, since we're on camera and I really don't care. High mobility type Galgoog. Where did you go? High mobility Galgoog. It's not that expensive. Johnny Ridden's high mobility Galgoog type. And also because I'm curious, or can we combine you with this one as well? Apparently that procs it as well. I don't get this game. But, high mobility type is basically the same thing. Oops. I clicked over. I didn't mean to do that. Luckily, I know how much it costs, so I can go there real quick. Yeah, stat-wise, it's like 10 better and everything. Not much better. Yeah. So, folks, that was that. Like the video if you liked it. We'll be back in a few minutes for more. You know, maybe I'll buy another pilot or two. Maybe another Federation guy. Like Ford. You could use Ford. Anyway, folks, good night.